Welcome to the Eclipse Instructional Video Series. Eclipse is the City of Philadelphia's public portal for licenses, permits, and inspections. Applying for a Commercial Building Permit In this video we're going to review how to apply for a permit in Eclipse. Please note, all construction permit applications follow the same general format, although the information requested from you may vary slightly with permit type. When preparing to apply for a permit, check out the city's website and read the permit requirements. Also be prepared to use the screen capture feature on your PC or tablet. Log into your Eclipse account by visiting the Eclipse website. Enter the email address and password associated with your account and select sign in. If you do not have an Eclipse account, Refer to the Creating an Account in Eclipse video at phila.gov forward slash li. On your home page, look for the Permits and Certificates section and click Apply for a Permit or Get a Certificate. The Apply for a Permit page will appear. Many different permit types are listed on this page. For more information, visit the Permits and Certificates area at phila.gov forward slash li. In this video example, we'll be applying for a commercial building permit. Most permit types follow similar application steps. However, for zoning permit applications, refer to the video on applying for a zoning permit at phila.gov forward slash li. To start, select the permit type you'd like to apply for. The permit screen will appear. Note that a unique application number is automatically generated. This number and the status of your application will be visible at the top of the screen throughout your application process. Remember, you can leave your application at any time and it will be saved as a draft and will be accessible to you in the future. Let's start completing the application information. Be sure to fill out all fields that are marked with a red asterisk as they are required. If a field is not required, it may not pertain to you. So, if you're not sure, skip it. The first field for master permits is only applicable if the commercial building is a subdivision. For more information on master permit approvals, visit phila.gov forward slash li. Identify your relationship to the permit. Most applicants are owner or professional tradesperson, such as a design professional, contractor, or expediter. If you select professional tradesperson, a drop-down list will appear that shows all licenses eligible to serve as applicant that are associated with this account. In this example, we are going to select owner. Next, identify the licensed design professional responsible for the project by using the search feature. Be sure to search for the name of the design professional and not the name of the design firm. If you can't find the correct design professional in the search, select No. A field will appear where you can enter the design professional's name, company, address, email, and phone number. The information to include is specified in the blue dots, so check here if you're not sure. These blue dots show up throughout the application process and always contain helpful information. Be sure to check them often. Choose the type of work to be done. Addition and or alteration is for renovation to an existing structure. And new construction, shall only, is for a new building where each floor or space will be built out under separate permits. Choose the proposed structure from the list provided. This is not a full list, so choose other if you can't find what you're looking for. Leave the number of units as one, unless your application includes dwelling units. In our example, our application will have 20 dwelling units. If there is a project associated with this address, use the search feature to find and select the project. If your project is phased, you should consider establishing a city-managed project to streamline reviews. Please visit phila.gov forward slash li for more information on this service. Next, provide a brief description of the work to be done. 
This description is used by licensing and inspections department employees to quickly understand the scope of work. Next, choose your review type. Remember, review times and fees change with each type. And easy standard applications are only applicable for select work. Check the blue dots or philagov forward slash li for more information. For our example, we'll choose standard review. Search the building address using the address number and street name only. Where there are multiple buildings or condominium units at an address, you must select the specific building or condominium unit. Visit our website for a map that will help you identify the correct building. Use the specific location box to identify the specific location within the structure or on the property where the work will be performed. The owner information shown is based on the address selected above. If the information is outdated, select the checkbox and add the correct owner information. This change applies only to this permit. You may be required to resubmit this owner information with subsequent permit applications until the city's address database is updated with the current owner information. For our example, we will not change the owner. On the property owner contact page, if the subject property is owned by a company, please check the box and enter the contact information of any natural person with more than 49% equity interest in the property. If no individual has such an interest, provide the contact information of at least two natural persons with the largest equity interest. Then, select the next button. This property information screen is read only and shows the potential impacts of your permit based on the address entered earlier on the location screen. These impacts may trigger prerequisite approvals or additional permit documents. When you're done reviewing, click Next. The Project Details page is where you start to enter the building information. Enter the number of stories of work and select the checkboxes that apply to your building. These checkboxes either drive your reviews or will require more information to be included in your application. Note that errors on this page may result in delays to your permit application. The need for special inspection is mandated by the building code. Check there to see if it's applicable for your project. If we check this box and hit next, this special inspection screen appears. Click Add Special Inspection and use the drop-down list to select a special inspection type. Search for an assigned agency if you know it. If you are unsure, the assigned agency can be left blank but they will have to be named before the permit can be issued. Identify the design professional. However, our example doesn't need a special inspection, so we're going to go back one screen and unselect the special inspection checkbox. On the Related Permits page, link an associated zoning permit by typing the number into the space provided. If you select the magnifying glass, all zoning permits associated with the address will appear and be available for selection. If your project includes excavation more than 5 feet below adjacent grade and requires an excavation permit, you may enter the existing excavation permit application number here. Please note, if you have not yet filed a separate excavation permit application, you must submit the excavation permit information and related documents with this permit application. In the Construction Area section, enter the area of earth disturbance for your project. Also enter the combined area of all floors, including basements. Enter the costs of work associated with the building under this application. Please note, adding a cost into any of these fields will automatically create permit reviews for these items. Enter the occupancy type for each floor or story of the building under the application. Since our example application is for a five-story building, we'll add five lines for the floors and one line for the basement. If your project includes work that impacts an adjacent property as described in any of the work listed on this page, select Yes. 
Otherwise, select no, and proceed to the next page. If you selected yes, an owner acknowledgement section will appear. Select the first checkbox if the required project information has been shared with the property owner or tenant and the acknowledgement form has been signed. Select the second checkbox if you made a reasonable attempt to share the property information with the adjacent property owner and were unable to obtain their signature. Then select Next. If this is a residential project, development impact tax will be added to your permit fee. Projects that are ineligible for the real estate tax abatement are not subject to this tax. If your project is ineligible for tax abatement, select this box, then click Next. Next, add a licensed contractor. If you don't know your contractor, you could submit the application without completing this step, but the permit will not be issued until a contractor has been identified. Also, if someone other than the contractor is completing the application, the licensed contractor will need to affirm association before the permit will be issued. Contractors are notified through postal mail or email, and they confirm through their online account. If known, add any subcontractors. Subcontractors may also be added at any time through your Eclipse account homepage. Earlier on the project costs page, we entered a $10,000 mechanical cost of work for this application. That added this mechanical page to our application. Add all the types of equipment that are included and the quantity. Now, select the mechanical contractor. If you don't know your mechanical contractor at this time, you could submit the application without completing this step and provide the contractor information later. Please note, the mechanical permit will not be issued until a contractor has been identified. Here you will upload your documents. Check the right-hand column to know whether or not a document is required. Required documents are based on the work and structure type selected earlier in the application. Optional documents may still be necessary for your permit type. Check our website for a complete list of permit application documents. Write down or take a screenshot of the documents you need to upload. Click Upload Files to open the file folder on your computer. Choose the PDF files to upload. Please be sure to upload PDF type files. Select the document type from the drop down menu. E plans are digital copies of building plans provided for work done under permits. If you use the standard sheet naming convention for these electronic plans, all sheets within the file will auto sort based on name. The owner, applicant, and contractor will automatically be included and receive email notifications related to this permit. From this page, you can adjust notifications, add additional contacts, or invite co-applicants. Note, a valid email address is required to receive notifications. Co-applicants have full access to the application and are granted the same rights that you do to make changes to the application. Invite a co-applicant by giving them the association code. They can use the code in their Eclipse account homepage to associate with the permit. Please note, each code may only be used once. Warnings do not prevent application submission, but they must be addressed before permit issuance. Errors unlike warnings do need to be fixed before you could submit your application. After taking note or a screenshot of the errors you need to address, select the word fix to navigate back to the page and correct the item. Use your error list and correct any errors as you progress through your application. Let's fix our error by adding a required document. Continue selecting next until you reach the legal declaration page. Read the text carefully and check the box to confirm. Then select Next. This page shows only the application fee. You will pay the remainder of the fee when the permit is issued. Select Pay Fees and Submit Application. 
This will transfer you to the City of Philadelphia's Eclipse Application Payment Gateway. Follow the on-screen instructions to make your payment. Electronic check, credit card, and debit card are accepted forms of payment. Please note, surcharges may apply based on the payment type. Rates are subject to change. Once payment has been completed, hit the Continue button to be transferred back to Eclipse. The confirmation screen shows when your permit has been successfully submitted. Remember, you don't have your permit yet. Your application will now be reviewed by city staff. Please note, if any required information is missing or incomplete, you'll be notified through the My Activities tab in your Eclipse account. To view the information and status for this application, select Click here to be transferred to the permit record. The details section includes all the details we submitted for this permit application. Review the page and all tabs for information related to the permit and available actions such as withdrawing your permit, requesting inspections, or adding subcontractors. Be sure to check back often as information may be updated as your application moves through the city process. Thanks for watching. Check out the other Eclipse videos, FAQs, and resources at www.phila.gov forward slash li.